Hi guys, welcome to our next video on Selenium C Sharp with .NET Core course. I have been releasing many videos in Selenium C Sharp and after recording almost like 14 or 15 videos, I got a question from one of the community member asking while I released this lecture 6, which was the GitHub lecture, then there was a question on the comment asking, why don't you really cover GitHub Actions, which is something also very, very important and required for our CI CD with the GitHubs. And I was very surprised that I couldn't able to really cover during that particular flow because this course is not about GitHub Actions or GitHub code space or something like that. But GitHub Actions is really, really fantastic. And the question which uh, the guy has asked was also one of the thing which I would have already covered, but I have not covered that. So in this video, we are gonna talk about GitHub Action. So this video I'm going to release as lecture number seven of this particular series. But but actually this video I'm recording after almost like 14 uh, lectures. So you might see some of the code in this particular video will be kind of uh, jumped in. I mean the the project will be having a different fi files and folders over there. It's because that I'm recording after some time. So the idea is very, very simple. Even though you have many files or less files, doesn't matter. We are gonna make use of the GitHub Actions feature. And I have already covered about GitHub Actions in my Cypress course, but in this Selenium C Sharp uh, with .NET Core, I have not covered the, covered the GitHub Actions. So we are gonna really cover the GitHub Actions in this particular video. All right, it's very, very simple. So what is this GitHub Actions? So GitHub Actions in a nutshell is more like an CI CD, a way of working with your code sitting in a github repository so it's more like a jenkins or a team city or a team foundation server probably azure devops which has managed uh, machines or managed uh, images or containers which is going to run for you while you check in a code and it will start you know, understanding your dependency within your project it's going to automatically uh, uh, perform some actions which is there within your workflow uh, or the github's workflow or github actions workflow and then it's going to uh, build your uh, application and if there are some test project within that particular uh, repository or if you have specified that within your github actions workflow then that particular workflow is going to be executed so that's what is the whole idea of github actions and it's very very easy and fantastic because github actions is another way to work with your ci cd for free which is very very interesting for free you can execute your code which is sitting on the github's repository i'll quickly show you that so if you go to the uh, project over here the selenium c sharp .NET core project that we have been uh, developing all these days uh, you can see that I've already talked about the code spaces. I think I have already added that in this particular series in the playlist. You could have already watched that. If not, please go ahead and watch that particular video. It's GitHub's code space. And GitHub's action is another uh, feature which is introduced by GitHub later. I mean, early this year. It's pretty awesome and fantastic. So if you just search for uh, GitHub, um, GitHub uh, actions, and if you search like that, you can see that this is the GitHub Actions. And you can see that it says automate your workflow from the idea to production. And there are many different workflows that you can execute on the GitHub Actions. Uh, and then you can run your test on Linux, Mac, and v Windows operating systems. Uh, and you can see that you can, you can do almost many things which you can really, really do in your uh, Jenkins or Azure DevOps uh, or a circle ci or whatever it is so you can do everything uh within github actions as well so we're going to create a very very super simple github action this time and we'll see how it actually works so i'm assuming that you already have uh, your project with uh, uh with the uh, chrome options and in headless mode of the chrome because we are going to be executing this particular uh, code within an container and that will not have the xpfb so make sure that your chrome driver is already available using the uh, uh, web driver manager and also uh, your chrome option says it's headless so that you can execute this particular code it will start making sense once i once I execute this particular code uh, in GitHub Actions. So if you go to the GitHub Actions, so this is the actions which I'm talking about. If you go here, it says that get started with GitHub Action. 
So GitHub Actions, you can see there are many different workflows available. It's super amazing to see that you can really automate almost everything in the build process and deploy it. And also you can see that you can deploy in the Azure web app, you can deploy it to ECS from AWS, uh, uh, KG, uh, GKE, uh, which is the Google's uh, Kubernetes engine. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, deploy in the IBM cloud. Oh my God, there are so many cloud providers like that, right? So uh, the one which we are really gonna work with is the .NET Core. And GitHub Actions is more intelligent enough to tell you, suggest to you that this particular repository looks like a C-sharp repository. So you can use either the .NET Core workflow or the .NET Core desktop workflow. See, simple. So just choose the set up this workflow with the .NET Core because our project is basically a .NET Core project. And if you see here the .NET Core project, once I just let me expand this a bit on the browser side, you can see that it tells that it's, it's going to be uh, the, the name of this particular uh, workflow is .NET Core and it is going to uh, fetch from the main branch uh, and you can see that the job is going to be performing is the build job and it's going to say it's run on Ubuntu latest which means it's going to run on the Ubuntu operating system uh, which is the Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu's based image which will be provided by Microsoft so Microsoft has all those images and once you start this this image will be downloaded from the registry and then the container will be starting up for you automatically and then it will be checking out the code on that particular container and then you can see that uh, it will uh, perform a setup of the .NET if the .NET doesn't exist because .NET is .NET Core right I mean it will install on the Ubuntu anyways uh, and then uh, you can see that it performs the .NET restores so instead of, it's, it's going to do a install dependency which is going to be the .NET restore and then it's going to build the project using .NET build and test which is going to be the .NET test so everything is going to happen for you using this particular workflow amazing I'm not going to do anything at this point and I'm going to execute this particular code and I will show you how it's is going to work for you automatically see I have not did anything just just like that. I'm just going to do a start commit. I'm going to commit a new file uh, on the particular repository. So it's going to directly check into the main branch right now. And if you go to the action this time, you can see that it is in a uh, yellow color dot there, which means it's going to perform or it's performing certain actions for us. So you can see there is a build op option there. And once you go to the build option, uh, you can see that the setup of the .NET Core is happening for us uh, and it says that .NET install is going to extracting and it's installing and then it's installing all the dependencies for us. Boom! See that? Everything is happening. Pretty much like how you do with the Jenkins, like you define all the steps on the, uh, the Jenkins file. Pretty much exactly what it's been happening, but it's happening on the YAML file of the uh, GitHub Actions. So now it's running the test for us, guys. You can see if I just scroll all the way down, you can see that it says, please, uh, uh, the Chrome driver has started. And you can see that the test is actually passing for one of the tests, which is the login test. And one of the tests is failing over here, which is fine. But you can see that the whole idea here is the test is actually executing on the GitHub's action this time, which is pretty cool. So you can see that the test is actually failing because I intentionally made the test to fail in one of our uh, video, which is the GitHub's code space video, uh, where I actually made the test to intentionally fail. So if I go to the unit test one.cs file, you can see that uh, there was a failure which we made but right now I think that the code looks okay I'm not sure why the test is actually failing for that reason so if I just let's say if I make a changes on my code um, uh, let's say if I just make this guy as yes, from almond to maybe almonds something like that and if I just commit the changes something like this and once I do a commit the change, then what happens is right now Selenium's code will automatically start running behind the scene in the action because we have set up the workflow and you can see that updated the unit test one.cs file. So now it is actually executing. You can see that the progress bar is coming over there. Uh, and once I go to this particular unit test one.cs and the uh, the build execution is happening at the moment. So it's going to run the full workflow for us right now automatically. So this is what I mean. I mean, 
right now you can see that it is doing all sort of stuffs for us like building the application testing the application everything using this workflow that too for free in the github using the githubs action so this is amazing so this is something which you should be knowing because nowadays a lot of people are really moving towards the uh, github workspaces so probably uh, you will be working with this kinds of uh, this kinds of uh, platform to perform your ci cd operation and if you have your own uh, machines or uh, the application which is going to be running on a cloud-based systems so you can connect with a github action to those cloud-based systems and it will be deploying the uh, application i mean the build for you over there and you can run the test on that particular machine right from the github's actions the everything is going to happen for you from the github's actions so i could still see that the test is actually failing and if i just scroll all the way down over here i think the test is failing because of one of the chrome is actually been crashing behind the scene but the next test is actually passing so you can see that uh, totally three tests are uh, uh, running uh, two tests are passing and only one test is actually failing i think the failure of this particular test is also happening because of the spec flow code that we actually have and you can see that it says login user administrator uh, where the chrome has been exited and it's not running properly so if i don't uh, if i remember properly uh, if I just go all the way to my code over here on the Selenium code that we wrote on the hooks over here, you can see that we have this particular Chrome uh, where we did not set the uh, the headless option there. I guess that's the reason where the test has been failing. So just give me a second. I will just go and fix it as well for now. So if I just go to the codes and if I just go to the Selenium C sharp dot net core code, uh, and if I go to the hooks and hooks one dot uh, CS if I just do the edit file and we also need to add one more argument for the headless so I guess that's what is missing over here so the headless is also there right now looks everything good uh, so update hook one dot CS file I'm gonna commit this particular code right from uh, my github and then if i go to the action you can see that it says update hook one dot cs which i just did and just give it some time and once the build starts and once the test executes fully then we could see what's really happening there so now the test is actually executing so if i just come all the way down so if i'm not wrong the test should actually pass you can see that the login test has got passed this time and login test this is all already passing which is all right and you can see that this time the three test has got passed and for the first time after like two or three tries the test has got passed over here and you can see that the green symbol coming there which means the github actions could able to execute on the fly so which means we could be able to make the code chains we can uh, and you can see that it compiles and then it executes you can do the exact same thing from your ipad as i told you that you can uh, work or even you can code your uh, code right from the iPad using the GitHub's code space and this is the uh, code uh, execution engine which is the CI CD pipeline using GitHub actions so that you can deploy it and you can see how it works so uh, after GitHub's acquired by Microsoft now you can see that everything is actually happening right from the cloud from your browser so you don't even have to move anywhere everything you can do even from your ipad or even from your cell phone if you have a big screen uh, then you can perform the whole actions right from the speaker browser so that's it guys this is about github action once again thank you for watching this video meet you in our next one thank you